So after Afghanistan stunned England in Delhi, it's time to ask George. Franzi asks, what happened? The best side won. Make no bones about that. Uh, Afghanistan weren't lucky. Uh, I think what you saw is a, a team who didn't feel a lot of pressure and do have quite a lot of skill. We're playing against an aging side who looked timid and old. And um, yeah, they, they um, Afghanistan were the better side. Uh, and it's it's right up there with the biggest World Cup shocks you'll ever see. I don't think it's quite as big as West Indies and Kenya, but I actually think um, it's possible. You know, the champions being beaten by a side that had previously only beaten Scotland, uh, have only been um, an ODI side for, what, 14 years, uh, came into this having lost eight in a row. Possibly big England's biggest ever upset in ODI cricket. Bigger than Ireland in... Uh, 2011. Yeah, I think so I'll because because them. no, but they've done very well in the previous World Cup. You know, in, in yeah. the Caribbean, they've done really well, and um, and they played brilliantly that day. I mean, if you remember, they were it was an amazing game, but um, you know, they should have lost by a long way. Or sorry, they they looked as if they were going to, and then Kevin O'Brien played one of the great innings. He just played magnificently. Yeah. Um, so no, but that's obviously another big contender. Uh, but the, yeah, this is huge. And England are champions uh, at that stage. England weren't very good at limited overs cricket, and Ireland came into the tournament, you know, having done well the previous World Cup. There's none of that this time. Neil Varani asks if playing a team with a really skillful spin attack, why wouldn't you play Moeen Ali? Did England just get conditions completely wrong today? Um, up to a point they did, yes. Uh, but I understand why they did, because, you know, you've seen the previous games there. Um, mm -hmm. They picked the same, uh, I think, balance of attack as India. It wasn't the same pitch, but it's only a couple of strips along. It looks as if it was a wee bit green. It's easy to be wise after the event. I would have done the same as them in terms of the team selection. We thought that there might be, we thought there'd be very little in it for spinners. Um but it's not just that. I mean, they bowled really poorly. I was quite surprised by how poorly they bowled against New Zealand. Mm. Uh, and they were worse. And, and and I really want to make the distinction here in that sides sometimes go for a lot of runs in ODI cricket because pitches are flat and batters are good and all the rest of it. And these things happen. England bowled poorly. You know, by any standard, Sam Curran and Chris Wokes had um, very off days, uh, again, actually, and um, uh, Afghanistan capitalised. They put them under pressure, Gabaz in particular, uh, put England's bowlers under pressure, but England started poorly with the ball. And, um, yeah, when you've got two of your first three or four bowlers unable to bowl more than four overs each, you're going to struggle. So I think that, I, I, you know, let's just, let's not hide behind the selection as a key reason. I think they probably did get it wrong. But I'm not going to be very critical of that because uh, you can see why they did. And other games here, um, you know, suggested that they got the team selection right. But it, it didn't work out that way. Daniel Chapman asks, how much of this is down to Matthew Mott and how much uh, and how much to the crisp competition and, and other factors? You know, I think I'm going to say the same thing again about uh, don't take anything away from Afghanistan. They weren't lucky. They weren't lucky. They they outplayed England fair and square. Um, their spinners bowled really well. They had the best seamer in the match in Faruqi. Um, and um, a couple of batters played in a way that England's couldn't. So uh, that is the key factor about Mott. Um, I would love to tell you what he does. Um, he didn't speak after the game. Uh, he doesn't really uh, let his guard down and socialise with the media in a way that previous coaches have, which I think is a mistake. Not not because um, I think it's a mistake because you're always better to build bridges rather than walls. Yeah. And I think that he might get more criticism than is warranted, possibly because he hasn't built up any relationships. That's neither right nor wrong. It's probably wrong actually, but I just think it's a fact of life. I just think it's a bit unwise. Um, in terms of what he does, I mean, look, I think England have been in denial, and I'm not being wise after the event. I have said this for a while. I think they've been in denial about their aging side. 
they haven't refreshed and renewed and they haven't concentrated on ODI cricket. They just thought we got this good ODI side, we'll turn up on the night and we'll be all right. And, um, you know, that hubris in cricket tends to kick you up the bum and that's what's happened. I don't think Mott's been strong enough to say that that's uh, the direction of travel and change it. So I do think he's partly culpable. Um, and the other thing is English cricket as a whole is just enthralled to Ben Stokes because he's a great player. And the answer is always Ben Stokes, you know, he'll get us out of trouble. And actually England has hidden behind Ben Stokes and his miracles. Without him, they probably haven't won either of those World Cups. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe he's masked some of the deficiencies for a while. But this this feels very like uh, Ashes of 06, 07, maybe even the Ashes of 13, 14, where an ageing side suddenly gets a shock. Uh, and they, they're not all old, of course, but some of the people who have come in maybe aren't up to the standard of the people they're replacing. Uh, you know, Liam Livingston won a game, to be fair, at the Aegeus a few weeks ago, but he hasn't done it very often under pressure, has he? Um, Sam Curran is not Joffre Archer or even Liam Plunkett in ODI cricket. You know, they, they, they're getting old and what happens uh, is you get a tipping point and things can get pretty ugly pretty quickly. It's not over uh, or it's not dark yet, but it's getting there, as Bob Dylan would say, were he here? He's not. He's popped out. To get a butter chicken. <laughs> Unlikely to appear. Uh, Dick Emery... Unlikely, asks, but you never know. <laughs> Dick Emery asks, is this the end for Chris Wokes in ODIs? Oh, probably. Yeah, it could be. It's a good question. Um, you know, I, 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 I really like Chris Wokes, and I think he's been a brilliant servant of English cricket, but that's kind of irrelevant. He's mm. had three... Modest games in succession. No, that's rubbish. He's had three poor games in succession. Let's not muck around. Um, and that's a worry. And he doesn't seem to have the weapons to be able to contain batters. And because of that, he's looking for other answers and he's losing his basic skills. Um, he's at an age where, you know, he 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 openly said, hadn't he, he probably wouldn't play any more 50 over cricket after the World Cup. And after the World Cup might come a wee bit quicker than he thinks. So, um yeah, uh, if you were David Willey, I think you'd probably be expecting to play against South Africa. And if Chris Wokes is dropped, uh, I don't think he could complain. Uh, but I hope that people remember what a fantastic career he's had and the huge part he's played in such amazing years for English cricket. Uh, but if things are going to end, they tend to end badly. James asks, did England make a mistake pleading with an unfit Ben Stokes to come up for the World Cup? sort of betraying a lack of confidence in, in the current squad? Again, I don't want to be wise after the event. You know, if Ben Stokes says, I'm fit, I want to play, could you really turn him down? Really? Now, knowing what we know now, maybe you could, but we didn't know that, did we? We thought he might be all right. We thought he would be up to bat. And the hip injury does seem to be new. It does seem that he struggled with it. Obviously, the knee thing's there all the time, but... Uh, it hasn't worked out and it was a punt and you shouldn't really be reliant on people who aren't fit. But he is a special cricketer. And Was it James who asked that? Uh, James, would be let, let us mm. know. Would, would you not have picked him? That would have been ballsy, I reckon. Ian Sweet asks, when winning the toss on a belter, why wouldn't you make first use? We did, as we've mentioned Hello. previously, did Butler get that wrong? Hello, Ian. Nice to hear from you. Hope you're well. Um I, I, no, I, I think they probably got it right. So what they thought is that there would be a, a, a minuscule amount of due and it would probably make batting a wee bit easier. It didn't happen. I'm not positive there was any due against New Zealand, you know, and I've been checking for that stuff. But anyway, they said there was. They said batting got a bit easier. I, I thought batting got a lot easier for New Zealand because England bowled a whole lot of pies at them. But, you know, maybe, maybe the conditions played uh, a part as well. Anyway, they figured that... Um, it was going to be easier to chase and the batting would be a little bit easier under lights and it didn't happen. But I don't know that conditions got a lot worse. It's 100 overs. It's a day, you know. It's a fresh pitch before. They're just outplayed. You know, tactically, they may have made one or two. I think they got the toss right, to be honest. They just didn't play very well. It, I'm sorry if that's too basic an answer, but, you know, Chris Wokes bowled a lot of very slow ball half volleys. Sam Curran bowled quite a lot of half-tracker slower ball long hops. 
They didn't feel great. They didn't bat very well. Afghanistan did all those things better. You know, I, 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 you see there, I, I've made the mistake I didn't want to make of listing all the things that England had done wrong, which they did, but not praising Afghanistan. And they were genuinely good. I mean, you know, their opening partnership was smart. What was it, 114? It was really good. And, and even when they stuttered in mid-innings against England spinners, they fought back and uh, played with uh, some real character down the order, which was something that I thought they wouldn't really do. So, um, and then, you know, as I say, their spinners obviously are going to get the headlines, but Faruqi bowled with more incision than any other seamer in the match. So um, England played pretty poorly, but Afghanistan played well. And I know that's a simplistic answer, but it's also spot on. And Ben Rigby signs us off with a nice cheerful one. Are England undercooked or over the hill? They're over the hill. Uh, but they're a bit undercooked as well. I mean, it's a perfect storm, isn't it? I think I'm going to go back to what I said, a six, seven ashes feeling to me. Um, and some of the people who are coming in, I think there's a bit of an air of hu- hubris about English cricket, but that, that tends to happen. You know, English cricket's eras tend not to be as long as, say, Australian era- eras. But just because they're not as long and just because they end badly, and 13, 14 ended real bad, yeah? But the team that had gone before it was brilliant. It doesn't mean that everything that went before is rubbish. You know, England have played the most glorious uh, white ball cricket over the last few years. They've changed the game, revolutionised the game, been a lot of fun, and it's ending. And it's ending ugly. But it, I think, I mean, hey, they might prove me wrong in the next couple of weeks. But do they you, might, do yeah. You worry, <laughs> do you kind of Go worry on. about them? In not the the games against South Africa and, and India and and some of the teams that are playing well, but maybe people like Sri Lanka and and Netherlands maybe in the in the in the sort of latter latter part. I mean, Sri Lanka's next week, isn't it? Do you worry about them in those kind of games as well now? Well, I mean, I've seen enough of English cricket to not be complacent. You know, I was at the two thousand fifteen <laughs> World Cup. I was at the two thousand and seven World Cup. Uh, Ninety nine. You know, I, I've been around and seen England so. Uh, it does teach you to never be complacent. So, uh, uh, and Sri Lanka recently had 13 wins in a row, so I, I didn't think that they were a gimme. Uh, South Africa is looking like a fearful um, uh, fixture right now. England are going to have to turn it around quite quickly. The problem is they don't have lots of the strengths they used to have. They do not have the Joffre Archer incision with the new ball. He was a special, maybe once in a lifetime player. They do not have the skill in the middle overs from Liam Plunkett. And Adil Rashid is probably not the bowler he was. They do not have the incredible power and bravery of Jason Roy, who in 2019 was a magnificent player. Um, You know, they've lost quite a lot of players. And those they have are a bit older. And I don't, don't tell me if any of them got better since 19. Maybe one or two, but I'm I'm struggling to think of any. And the people who have come in aren't maybe quite as good. But, um, you know, they could, it, cricket would be a dull game if it was predictable. But it would be, um, you know, Pakistan in 92, I suppose, turned it around from this position. Uh, so I suppose these things can happen. But uh, no, England needs snookers uh, from where they are right now. And um, maybe that'll be an opportunity to, to reassess. It's a pretty dysfunctional setup I think England have right now where they don't play a lot of ODI cricket. People are coming into the side, uh, having you know not had the grounding that the generation before had. Yes, the 100 is partially responsible for that. I know that that um, puts some people up in arms, but the fact is you've got Gus Atkinson and Harry Brook in this squad who have hardly played a lot of 50-over cricket. And come on now, that that must be, must be a disadvantage. It must be. So... Um, there are all sorts of things that could be looked at, but basically when England went into 19, they put all the priorities into 50-over cricket. And this time it's been an afterthought. It's been after the T20. It's been after mm. Test cricket. They've had a brilliant old run uh, in all formats. And uh, as I say, I fear it's coming to an end or it's coming to an end in a pretty ugly way. That's a shame, but it happens.